Hello, this is Dr. Lorenz. I hope this finds you well and uh, educates you even better. Uh, Welcoming you to one of my videos here at Longevity Health Institute on something so important, and that is inflammation, particularly your CRP, which is your C-reactive protein. It's, it's a blood marker that you can track, and any provider, any doctor, any practitioner you see you should ask to have this track. Now we track it here as a metric here all the time at Longevity Health Institute. Me and my providers do this all the time. Why is because it's so meaningful, but it also is so, so, so important and it can tell us so much and it's just one lab. Okay, so that is C-reactive protein, CRP. But anyway, let me tell you about my day today and how this was brought up and then the meaning behind it but you never want to have inflammation. Now I've done other videos on this and we've talked about this, but I wanna make sure that I put some of this together for you about talking about chronic disease, okay? Because here aging, here at Longevity Health Institute, aging is a disease, okay? In our preventative model and metrics we track, we wanna make sure that we're identifying metrics that slow down the aging process and keeping you optimal, okay? And that's so, so, so important because yes, lifestyle, and yes, our six point model here really identifies these things, but the reality of it is too, is that if we don't track metrics on you and really follow you quarter by quarter, by year by year by year, we cannot really authentically say how well we're doing. Of course, you're gonna feel great and you're gonna thrive that's the whole idea <laughs> if you're coming to see us. But we're gonna have evidence that you're actually in that preventative model and that you're gonna have a less of a risk of heart disease and diabetes and dementia and osteoporosis and chronic conditions like autoimmune disease and cancer as you age. So aging gracefully, optimally thriving, not surviving. Okay, but anyway, CRP, get back to CRP, C-reactive protein. It's an inflammatory marker. And yes, somewhat nonspecific and yes, highly sensitive. In fact, one of the labs you can do is called HSCRP, highly sensitive C-reactive protein, okay, which is yes, the best test. But in general, it's an inflammatory marker. Any inflammation in your body can cause CRP to go up. But let me tell you about the common ones and the ones here that we see and then I'll tell you about my story with my patient today this morning, and she's done amazing. She's lost already 25 pounds in less than a year. We really fixed her symptoms with IBS. Um, she had some irregularly bloating, diarrhea, stuff like that. We've got her hormones balanced. And again, that wonderful weight loss journey, better mood, that was one of her objectives, weight loss and improved mood. Um, energy's better, okay. And she was telling me, hey, I'm frustrated about something. She got her labs. We keep reviewing her labs and following the metric of her CRP. Now, mind you, she had a very high CRP, very high. But I want to tell you her story so you can understand how we fixed it and also how this all gets put together. Okay, but many things can cause high inflammation. High inflammation can be caused by obesity, by infections in the body, any type of infection can be caused by arthritis, can be caused by insulin resistance and diabetes, okay? Can be caused by toxins in your body. Um, but it also can be caused by irritable bowel syndrome or leaky gut or just digestive issues. And I will tell you the one thing that's mostly overlooked with CRP when it's high, and I mean like it's, we consider high a two and a three is ideal or less. Obviously the lower the better. But if it's say, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, she had like a 22 when she came in originally. Again, it's way down. She's about 12 now. She's lost a lot of weight and we're improving things. And she feels so great. And we got her on hormones that help out inflammation and all these other things, okay? And she has very limited, no symptoms, but why is her CRP still high? Now again, weight is one, infections are one, irritable bowel is one, heavy metals are one, arthritis is one, but uh, oh, dental too, dental issues can cause higher CRP. So the point is you have to consider the whole person, but weight is a very common one and gut issues are very common, okay? Your biggest 
organ in your body that's going to have the biggest impact in a second by second or minute by minute with inflammation is your gut barrier, is your epithelium at that digestive barrier, okay? And it's very vulnerable. Okay, and it's very sensitive. And when you break down that epithelium, that digestive barrier, and you create what we call endotoxins into the bloodstream, and I'll explain this again in a minute, what happens, but you create an inflammatory reaction. This antigen in your body creates inflammation. So when you get an infection in your body, period, any type of infection, strep, COVID, pneumonias, influenza, whatever, these things cause inflammation, okay? Well, essentially, an, any creation of an antigen in your body is gonna create an inflammatory reaction, which is at that gut lining, okay? And what happens? CRP goes up. Now, what we've done with her history, as we've learned, is we're helping her, her leaky gut. We're using a protocol that's very effective very efficient in healing that gut, building our microbiome of improving that billions and trillions of good gut bacteria and using things very specifically that heal that, those bonds between the epithelium of the gut and a diet that supports that, an anti-inflammatory diet, very typically a low FODMAP or low grain diet, but always, always gluten-free and dairy-free, the most common inflammatory and gut irritants in the body so that has helped her. And what have we learned? And she's learned because she wanted to be a little stubborn at first. I get it. We're all humans. <laughs> but she learned that when she had dairy, she was cheating a bit, not glued, but she was having dairy. We read her lab and one time her CRP, I think, went from like 22 to like 8 and then it jumped back up to like 13. Okay. And that was just simply from adding dairy back in her diet. But adding dairy back in her diet and her lining was not healed. It might have been improved and she had a lot of improved symptoms, but it wasn't fully healed. So that's very, very important to understand is we got to get that lining healed. When that lining is fully healed and we have evidence of it healed, you will get a significant decline, maybe not linear, but progressive decline in CRP. And there'll be evidence of symptoms and that CRP and inflammation in the body. Okay. And we look at live blood here also, which is also evidence of healing that leaky gut. But, so she is improving, but not fixed. So let me review what we did with her. Gluten-free, dairy-free. She found that some grains bothered her, so she took those away. We're using high-dose, professional-grade probiotics. I can tell you where to get them in a minute. The best of the best. Okay, we're using a diet that's also consistent, consistent excuse me, of a lot of fermented foods or prebiotics, a lot of feeders to her gut flora, okay? We're putting her on amino acid called glutamine, helps regeneration of that lining, create those peptide bonds, an IgG immunoglobulin powder. And then in her case, because she's, this is a big issue, and I'm gonna tell you why it's a big issue for her, and it's taken a while, because her journey's been about, roughly about six months to a year, um, and she's really, really been compliant and kind of leaned into this, let's just say the last four to six months, okay? And so obviously she is seeing a lot of improvement, okay? Because of that, compliance is a big part, okay? Being a team, we're a team here, <laughs> okay? Okay, it's, it's uh, definitely a team approach here. Um, but one of the things is that she's still, that gut lining is still not fully healed. So anytime she has a cheap meal or she has an influence in her diet like dairy or something like that, it's going to cross that gut lining barrier okay, and create that antigen effect, that endotoxin reaction, okay, and when that happens, inflammation is going to go up. So again, how do we solve this is also making sure that that barrier is healed, okay. So not being too redundant, but we've done all these things with her. She's taking a while. I'll tell you the punchline here of why she's taking so long, but we just added today in a peptide called BPC-157. Um, this, this peptide, which is a bigger version of linked together amino acids. So not a protein, not amino acid, but a peptide that size, okay, we use. And three times a week, she'll use it for probably two months and it'll be a more dramatic effect, okay, to heal her lining. Now, it is an injectable, it's sub-Q, because that's, that way it bypasses your gut and the peptide doesn't break down to amino acids. It's like an eyelash type of needle. It's very, very 
not noxious to the people don't freak out they get a little excited but when you can barely see the needle and you just put it in your belly fat three times a week it's no big deal okay um it's smaller actually than a insulin syringe or even an insulin type of syringe so it's very very small okay um and uh, don't really have anybody that has problems with that but bpc 157 is a remarkable body protection compound that helps you regenerate epithelial lining actually can even heal ulcers okay and we've had many evidence clinically here of many patients that have done wonderful with bpc 157 so the point here is we had to go a little step further and again here's the punchline why is she so difficult to treat now leaky gut um, dysbiosis all these imbalances in gut and healing that lining can take sometimes six months to a year period it can it's an organ it's a sensitive organ stress affects it diet affects it sleep you know all, all these things going on with us medications etc point being is it is hard to heal in the in a time length standpoint it's going to take time but some people it could take a year or two or three okay her situation is this i said she said why is it taking so long i said so tell me about your birth She's literally looked at me like, I said, seriously, I need to know. I'm telling you, tell me how your mother's gut biome is. Tell me about, if you know, some people don't know this or if try to find out. Tell me, not that it matters, but to give you that answer. Tell me about your birth delivery. Were you vaginally birthed naturally? Were you C-sectioned? Did you have to have antibiotics, you know, in the in delivery room or pre-delivery? And also, were you breastfed? And why do I ask that stuff, okay? You get your microbiome from your mother, so it's her fault. <laughs> I love to say that. I'm joking. I get all these calls from all these mothers and grandmothers. Um, no, but you get your gut flora from your, your mother, okay, to somewhat degree. But you're born also in utero. You're in this sterile, beautiful environment. It's kind of like this, this incubator and this, this microwave that's making you, like, perfect, and it's sterile, Okay but your gut microbiome is transferred from your mother. So if she has a bad gut or her mother had a bad gut, you're, the cards are a little bit stacked against you, okay? But it is what it is. What happens though too is, when you go through the vaginal canal, okay, naturally is where you get those agents that create antigen reactions and you build your microbiome, okay? So if you have a C-section, okay, or you have antibiotics pre-delivery, or in the delivery room because of infection or c-section and complications okay you're wiping out that influence of the microbiome okay that culture if you will in the self so it's like we're being self-cultured okay the other thing is <clears throat> studies show that when you're breastfed it helps feed and build your microbiome so if any of these things are stacked against you um or you didn't get the opportunity to because of whatever, okay, and it is what it is, let's go forward. But these can then set you up for earlier leaky gut, digestive issues, reflux, bloating, colitis, autoimmune bowel issues, esophagitis, etc. Okay, so always remember that. Now, nowadays, you know, if it's a situation, it sounds kind of strange and interesting, but a good, you know, forward thinking uh, neonatal unit and delivery, if you're C-section, they actually do vaginal swabs and actually swab the baby's mouth and eyes and nose and then influence or try to get the, the mother to understand the importance of breastfeeding, especially the first three to six months, okay, because that's going to help really build that immunity and that microbiome. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I wasn't too long-winded, but this is so important because when you talk about chronic disease, thousands, and we know this in studies, thousands of chronic diseases are influenced by your gut microbiome, okay? And healing that gut and healing that microbiome and literally getting that, that tissue to heal in your gut and having no bowel symptoms and having a good, healthy, whole food diet, okay, will get your CRP down. And getting your CRP down, and this can be tracked, as always, anywhere, not just here, but here at Longevity, we always track your CRP. It's a metric. It's so important to us. 
but that's what will change your CRP. So I anticipate with her, not just a 22 to a 13 to an eight CRP, she will with BPC 157 and continue time heal and get that CRP down. And I've had many patients that have got CRPs from 30 down to under two, okay? Obviously we want it the lower the better, but literally that can happen, but it's not gonna happen if you have a bad digestive lining. This is Dr. Lorenz, be well.